Welcome, Ben Mama. This video is brought to you by A Compendium of ZX Spectrum Games Volume 1 by Kieran Hawken and AG Books. This full colour publication features over 250 game reviews from the early days in 1982 right up to the homebrew releases of today, as well as fun facts, interesting trivia, personal stories and is the ultimate companion to Sir Clive Sinclair's iconic 8-bit computer. It is available in both hardback and paperback and can be purchased worldwide from all leading bookstores including Amazon, Deborah Smith's, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble and Wordery. So what are you waiting for? Get your copy today! The follow-up to the hugely successful Sinclair ZX81, in fact it was originally named the ZX82, the ZX Spectrum was created as a computer for the masses rather than the classes and advertised as the first colour computer that could be purchased for less than £100, the 16K model anyway. Thanks to its affordable price, wide range of software, easy to learn basic language and easy setup which needed nothing more than a standard TV and a tape player, the Speccy, as it affectionately became known, went on to become the best selling computer in the UK and revolutionised the region's games industry. Many big people who head up today's billion dollar worldwide games industry still proclaim that they owe their career to Sir Kai Sinclair's revolutionary rubber key wonder. In fact, it was the Spectrum that started off my very own journey into home computing and video games, helping me learn the programming skills that got me through college and igniting the passion that saw me become a full-time games journalist in later years. With a system as popular as the ZX Spectrum, it's safe to say that you have a pretty substantial games library to choose from when making a video such as this. In fact, current figures put the number at over 10,000 titles. Pretty incredible, really. So I was actually quite surprised at how easy I found it to put together my final list of 10. Sure, there are a few more that I really wanted to include, but all of these are games I remember fondly from my youth, and that is perhaps why I found it so simple. So here we go with 10 amazing Sinclair ZX Spectrum exclusives. For those that don't know, Zombie Zombie is the much awaited follow up to the highly acclaimed Ant Attack, which wowed ZX Spectrum owners with its 3D isometric graphics and innovative gameplay. As before, you can play as a boy or girl trapped in a 3D city inhabited by nasties. But there are a number of quite substantial changes, starting with the change from the giant ants to flesh eating zombies. You also have a helicopter at your disposal, which is a key part of the game, as I go on to explain. Though you are armed, your gun won't kill the zombies, only fend them off. So you need to get a bit more creative, and this is where the helicopter comes in. Your chopper is able to drop bricks and also take them away, in order to create step-like structures. If a zombie falls off a structure that is three or more blocks high, it will die. So once you find a zombie on a map, you can build your trap nearby, then leave the copter and lure them to their death. The zombie turns from green to pink when it starts following you. You can encourage a zombie by creeping up behind it and tapping it on the back. You'll need to kill all the undead before you can escape the city. The graphics look pretty much the same as they did in the first game, no bad thing, but programmer Sandy White made big improvements to the sound and music. Overall, Zombie Zombie is not only technically impressive, but also very playable too. <laughs>
the only driving game released by the iconic Ultimate Play the Game, Trans Am is set in a post-apocalyptic United States in the year 3472. Using a top-down perspective, the object of the game is to drive around the country to retrieve the eight Ultimate Cups. Petrol is in short supply of course, so you need to scour the landscape for any remaining pumps that might help you out. As well as all the expected hazards that the landscape provides, such as rocks and ruined buildings, you'll also need to avoid the kamikazes who have been sent out to stop you. There is an invisible border around the landscape that causes the player's car to reverse automatically if you go too far out. The info panel on the left hand side of the screen displays a list of useful data including a map showing the key cities you need to visit, petrol gauge, speedometer, remaining lives and your engine temperature. If the latter gets too high then you need to stop for a while, leaving yourself vulnerable, so it's best to try and control your speed. The graphics are pretty good if nothing special and likewise for the audio, but the gameplay is great and it's hard to believe that this all fits into a 16k spectrum. Trans Am can probably best be described as a cross between Rally X, Time Pilot and Mad Max. That might sound like a pretty strange combination, but give it a play and it'll all make sense. It's funny because I was never a big fan of text adventures or even adventure games in general back in the days when I owned my Spectrum, well my original one that is, yet playing Muggsy sticks in my mind so vividly. This is probably because it's more than just another text adventure, it's an incredibly clever gangster simulator that combines elements from strategy games and management sims with some great visuals to provide what ends up looking much like an interactive comic book. In the game you take the role of the titular Muggsy and must attempt to become the ultimate crime lord and rule over the city as the number one gangster. You have to make every decision from where to go, to what to pay people and what to buy to help you in your mission. Every decision here counts, so you must really think about the choices you make. There is even a nice little arcade section that has been shoved in to make things more interesting where you get to take out your rivals. It's easy to see why Muggsy won so much acclaim at the time of its release because it really is a revolutionary and incredibly innovative game that doesn't really get the credit it deserves. It also serves as a great advert for Melbourne House's own Melbourne Draw that was used to create all the graphics in the game. If you like adventure games and want something a bit different, then Muggsy really is a must-have title. I think it's fair to say that Houston are one of the highest regarded software publishers on the ZX Spectrum, and amongst their catalogue of high quality releases, Quasitron is often quoted as being the best of the lot. It started off life as a port of the Commodore 64 classic Paradroid, but soon became a game of its own when the isometric engine was added in. For this reason it remains a ZX Spectrum exclusive, however there are a couple of unofficial homebrew remakes for the PC. In the game you play as a droid called Klepto, who has to make his way around the levels taking out the other robots he encounters. There are several ways you can do this, knocking them off platforms, smashing into them, using a weapon or grappling them. The last of these is the most important, because by grappling them successfully you can steal their abilities and upgrade your own hardware. This is performed by a mini game where you must compete against your rival. There are a wide range of enemy robots that have different skills and attributes. You can work out which one is which by analysing the unique coding system. 
it's worth consulting the manual to help you learn all of these. One thing I did like is the way many of the levels poke fun at other 8-bit computers, such as Bebatron and Amstrados. The 3D visuals in Quasitron are great and the sound effects are decent, but most of all the gameplay is excellent. Another ultimate title for this list, I honestly could have made up a whole list just with their games, Pissed is a lot like another one of their classics in Jetpack, and is an attempt to create an arcade quality action game on the Spectrum, but unlike Jetpack this one wasn't released for any other systems. Another feature of the game that's like Jetpack is that it can be played on the base model 16k Spectrum, and was also one of the few titles released on the short lived interface 2 ROM cartridge format. You play the game as Robbie the Robot, trying to defend a planet from hungry bugs including slugs, leeches and midges. This plant grows in the centre of the playfield with ledges up each side of the screen. Different items will appear on these outcrops including cans of bug spray, fertiliser and spades. The different coloured cans of spray are used to eliminate the same shaded bugs. Fertiliser makes your plant grow and the spade awards bonus points. Using the wrong coloured spray on a bug might have a small effect, such as freezing it, or no effect at all. If the plant manages to flower before it gets killed, then you move on to the next level. As the levels progress, the sprays become less effective, and the bugs grow in number dramatically. Pissed features lovely graphics with decent sound effects and fast action gameplay, and certainly wouldn't have looked out of place in the arcade halls of the era. Specky fans talk about the best cover tape games, they usually shout back Batty at you. And indeed, Elite's Arkanoid clone was a definite highlight, but I'd argue that a whole new ball game is even better still. Appearing on a Crash Magazine cover tape, this one was created by the one and only Pete Cook, the genius behind such classic Spectrum titles as Tor CT, Academy, Juggernaut and the excellent port of Stunt Car Racer. A whole new ball game is often compared to the excellent Gremlin published puzzler, Deflector, but Pete actually wrote it as a sequel to the also excellent Brainstorm, which he created for Firebird. The idea is to guide a ball around the screen to collect all the energy globes. The ball can't be stopped once it starts rolling, so you need to place barriers around the screen to change its direction. All globes will be collected before your time runs out, but you'll also need to watch out for other blocks on the screen that have strange effects on the ball, such as speeding it up or teleporting it to another section completely. Some of these are quite useful, while others are very much a hindrance. Even in its standard form, a whole new ball game is an incredibly addictive and enjoyable product, but when you also consider that it contains a level designer too, you have a game with almost limitless long term appeal. This is quite easily one of my all time favourite Specky games.
In 1983, Mervyn Escort programmed the legendary Death Chase for the humble 16K base model of the Spectrum, and a legend was born. Having just seen Return of the Jedi in the cinema, he was inspired by the Forest Speed to Chase sequence and decided to create a game based on it. Part of Micro Mega's slightly misleading 3D action range, it quickly garnered praise from the press and consumers alike for its advanced arcade style gameplay. It really stood the test of time too, as in 1992 it was awarded the prestigious title of Best Spectrum Game Ever by the highly regarded Your Sinclair magazine. The premise of the game is simple, to speed through the forest on your bike, taking out the rival bikers before moving on to the next stage. These stages alternate between day and night, and there are eight in total. As the game goes on, the density of the trees increases, making it much harder to avoid them. As well as the enemy bikes, tanks and helicopters will also appear on the horizon, which can be shot for bonus points. Though your gun shoots straight forward, by moving the bike left or right, your bullets will also move in that direction, adding in a new tactic for the game. Whilst I wouldn't call Death Chase the best Spectrum game full stop, it's definitely the best for the original 16K base model, and a rightful classic. Great graphics, decent sound, and really compulsive gameplay. Giving away as a free game on the cover tape of Crash Magazine issue 75, Master Blaster is a slick vertically scrolling shoot em up that could have easily been sold as a commercial game in its own right. The gameplay will be familiar to anyone who plays video games, moving up the screen, shooting the enemies and defeating the end of level bosses. Along the way you can pick up various power ups to activate one of seven different weapons, ranging from a standard laser to exploding missiles. Your Starship Enterprise like craft is also equipped with three smart bombs, which come in especially useful for the bosses. Master Blaster also features interactive scenery too, some of this needs to be blasted out of the way to progress whilst other parts try to kill you. The levels are incredibly varied too, with each one having its own unique design, alternative enemies and different hazards that need to be negotiated. If this wasn't good enough already, the visuals in Master Blaster are just terrific, with superb use of colour and even some smooth parallax scrolling. The audio is a bit flat sadly, showing there isn't a 1 to 8k version to correct this. Despite that one issue though, it's really hard to pick a fault with the game. It's as slick a vertically scrolling shoot em up as you're going to find on the Spectrum, and is undoubtedly one of the best cover tape exclusives ever, along with the likes of Batty and a whole new ball game. I first played this game at a friend's house, and it had me enthralled from the very first moment. At this point I was still pretty new to video games anyway, so the basic graphics and sound did nothing to put me off. One of the key elements was that it was multiplayer, meaning a group of us could all play at the same time. Viking Raiders allows up to four people to take the role of a Norse warlord in an effort to defeat your enemies and plunder all their resources, so turn based strategy it is then. Viking Raiders isn't exactly what you would call advanced. The whole game is played on a single screen and all instructions are entered via a few basic key presses. You then use your limited amount of money to buy an army, ships to transport them and catapults for long range attacks. Should you need to top up your cash, then look out for the handy treasure chests. The last player remaining on the battlefield is the winner, it's as simple as that really. 
Viking Raiders is just amazingly addictive, even when playing on your own. Little touches like the randomly generated landscapes and ability to rename the players also helps and adds a nice little bit of personalisation. While we had the multiplayer madness of Worms in the 90s, back in the 80s we had Viking Raiders. In my opinion this is one of the best reasons to own a ZX Spectrum and one of my all time greatest childhood memories too. It's fair to say that School Days is regarded as one of the greatest Spectrum games ever, and it's easy to see why. I myself fell in love with it from the first time I played it on my friend Chris McDermott's rubber key, but I've always found it strange that it gets talked about more than this sequel, which is basically more of the same, but not only fixes several annoying bugs to its predecessor but also adds a ton of new features too. As well as our boys school we now have a girls school on the other side of a large playground and there are more items and weapons to discover, a more complex goal and a bigger roster of characters, all of which can be renamed as you wish. After stealing your school report in the previous instalment you now have to get it back into the headmaster's safe, but this won't be easy. You're going to have to trick teachers, solve puzzles, activate traps and take part in all sorts of other shenanigans in order to succeed. If you get caught messing around or bullying your schoolmates then the teachers will award you lines. But give your girlfriend a big smooch at playtime and she'll do some of them for you. But don't take her for granted or you'll regret it. One of the first true sandbox games, Back to School is as engrossing and engaging now as it was back then and in my mind it represents the very best game ever released for the ZX Spectrum, a simply unmissable addition to any collection. Sinclair's new ZX Spectrum Action Pack has a powerful 128K home computer, a joystick, six very different games, and a deadly accurate light gun. That'll keep those droids on the run. The new Sinclair Action Pack puts the zap back into computers. And that rounds up my look at 10 amazing exclusives for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Can you think of any other titles for the Specky that should have made the list, or do you think some of these games were unworthy of inclusion? I always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comments section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamer Man, Diago Piero Dos Santos Silva and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now, where you can get access to host extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.